Okay, like I said at the beginning of the section, testing web clients is a rather tricky business because you need the web client to actually talk to something. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how to set up a JUnit test and use Wiremock to actually test a client. So it, uh, coming up, I'm going to show you how to, uh, we'll go through a code review. I'm going to go ahead and just write a, a web client that we can utilize for the test. And then we need to add in the Maven dependencies. So I'm going to jump over to IntelliJ now and show you uh, we'll do a quick code review of that web client and then add in the Maven dependency for Wiremock. Okay, so let's go through and uh, make the necessary changes. The first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this uh, 8081 server port. That was being used just for recording with Wiremock. So we don't need to have that set anymore. So I'm just going to get rid of that. We'll be working on 8080 from the Spring Boot project going forward in the course. So the next thing I want to do is, is go through... Uh, I've gone in and implemented our beer order status of change event listener. So the scenario here that I'm uh, working with is I have a, an order status change and I want to do a callback. So a simple webhook uh, callback. Uh, webhooks are generally pretty simple. You just do a, a post to a URL. And here you can see on lines 33 and 34, I'm injecting or setting up a couple new properties. So I have REST template coming in. I'm going to let Spring manage the REST template or uh, an external entity and manage that REST template. You can see that I'm injecting in a REST template builder. This is a, a typical way to handle REST template with Spring. Uh, and then I build up my REST template. And then on line 45, I've implemented the order status update event. Basically, I'm going to get the order and I'm going to do uh, basically a type conversion here. So I'm using the builder pattern and I'm building up an order status update. And then down on line 58, my beer order, uh, you can see there uh, the first property that I'm passing into uh, post for object is a, a callback URL. So I'm expecting the event to have the URL and then the update property. And here that's the response. And I'm planning to get back for this scenario. I don't care what the response is. A uh, pretty simple example that I'm going through here. I'm just going to ignore basically the response. I just want a good good response to come back. REST template will throw an exception if I get a non-200 response coming back from, from the call. So here I'm just going to log it. More of what I want to do here is just demonstrate a REST template call with uh, using Wiremock. So a couple other minor changes that I made from the code that we had. I added in a customer ref property. This is just evolving the data model. And then here, I, I didn't have these methods set as public, so I'm bringing this in just as a, a convenience to do that type conversion for timestamp because this is using a relational database. I'm putting timestamps in there and then sending across wire, I'm going to an offset dat, date and time. So pretty, pretty simple changes. Now, the last thing that we want to do is actually go in and add in the Maven dependency for our wire mock. So to do so, what we want to do is come over here to dependencies. And this is going to be Wiremock extension, like so. And that is the latest one. And I'm going to open up Maven. And refresh Maven. Now we can see that the Wiremock extension does come in. You can see that it's being highlighted with red. And for some reason, it's not available in Maven Central, so we need to add an additional repository. So what we can do is set up Maven like so, and we'll say repositories. And let's see, we want to say ID. And th this is right off the, the website. If you look at a GitHub for this project, you'll see this configuration right there. So it's git pack. Dot io and I copy the URL over. So if you if you go to the project page for the Wiremock extension, what you'll see is that you have this git pack io uh, for the repository that you have to add. And now we can see that this should that little red line should go away. But this does this dependency does uh, bring in Wiremock and JUnit as well. So and then you can see Wiremock has a number of sub-dependencies with it. And I'm surprised that it has not gone away yet. I'll try to compile that. I'm looking at this red line, I'm expecting that to go away. I'm not sure why IntelliJ is highlighting that, because it does seem to be finding it okay. So 
we will revisit that if it becomes a problem. Okay, see that as a very simple implementation of a REST template. Like I said, I didn't want to get into something too complex. Uh, we're just demonstrating the functionality of Wiremock. But uh, here, the next step that we want to do is start writing a JUnit test for that. So uh, I'm going to jump over to IntelliJ and write that test now. Okay, in this video segment, what we're going to do is go ahead and start writing the JUnit test for that. So I'm going to come in here and say create a test. And we, we want to test that listen. And we are going to need a setup method. So I'm just selecting those options there. And yes, we will be adding this to GitHub. And I'm going to split this so we can get side by side and, and uh, see our method under test. So let me rearrange this just a little bit for us. Now let's go ahead and I'm going to set a property here. So we want to set up a, a listener. I'm just going to call it listener like so. Keep, keep that simple. And then in the before each, I want to configure that listener. So this is going to need a, a REST template builder. And I just create a new one like so. And here, I don't need to configure anything for the REST template builder. This is perfectly fine for our purposes. And now what I want to do is say the listener is going to equal a new listener with the uh, REST template. Now the test method, what we want to do is create a, a beer order. And we'll set up a order status of, uh, actually let's make this ready. So we have new and ready. So we're going to emulate it going from, from new to ready. set up the callback URL. And here what we want to do is we are setting this up and we are going to do HTTP slash update like so. So that's going to be my uh, callback URL. And we're going to do a timestamp value of local date time now. So that sets up the object, the beer order that we're going to be passing in. So now we're going to say, we'll create an event object. And that's going to take in our beer order. And then we want the previous status. So we're going to pass in a status of new. And now listener, listen, and we'll pass in the event like so. So that, that's our basic fundamental test. Now, if I run this, uh, basically, it's going to fail because uh, we're not talking to anything. So it's going to go out and by default look at localhost 8080. And you can see here, even though it passed, I am getting an error. You can see here that it connection refused. So our client is not getting called. We actually want a call back on that. So what we need to do is configure Wiremock, and I'll show you that in just a moment. Okay, you can see at this point we have a very... Uh, simple JUnit test setup. It is calling our client at configured properly, but the client is failing. So this is where we want to configure Wiremock to set up. Now, the way Wiremock is going to work is we'll actually inject it as a bean. We're going to use a JUnit extension, get a handle on it, inject it uh, into our class, into our test class. And then by default, the way this is working, it's going to grab a random port. So we're going to have to uh, get a hold of that random port and configure our test URL to use, utilize that random port. So uh, I'll show you how to configure that and our test, our web client will now actually call a running Wiremock server. Okay, in this video, what we wanna do is go ahead and set up Wiremock. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize that. And the first thing we wanna do is set up the Wiremock extension. And we are gonna say extend with Wiremock extension dot class. So that, that brings in uh, Wiremock or what the Wiremock extension for JUnit. Now, the next thing we want to do is come up here and we are going to do a Wiremock server, like so. Now we can say Wiremock server equals. And now what we're going to do is set up a dynamic port. So we are going to say with you can see that we need to import that. And we'll import that as well. So these are two static imports. And what we want to do is use that dynamic port. 
So you could do a secure port or a port. We are going to do that. And just so you can see the static imports, let's expand that out real quick. So you can see that we bring in these two static imports for uh, wire mock configuration. And then what we also want to do is come up here and say at managed. So that is going to be managed by the wire mock extension. So that sets everything up for uh, wire mock. Now there's one last thing that we need to do is what we need to do is set up the port. So we're going to come in here and insert that and we'll do a plus wire mock server port another plus sign and equal. So that is going to inject that in and remember local host of just declaring that that's going to by default go to port 80. And here we are setting the, up that callback URL to use the dynamic port that we're telling WireMock and the WireMock config to use. So let's go ahead and run this now. And we should see a, a different result. And here we can see that things go through. Let's a lot of log chatter here. And now we, we can see here, here's the uh, post. And here there's an error, no, no name not, not provided. And that is my mistake because I need to do a colon there for that port. So let's run this one more time. And here you can see that the request was unmatched by any stub mapping. So and there's one last configuration step that we need to set up, and that is to actually set up the web stub step. So we're going to say wiremock server stub for, and we are going to say post. Bring in that static import. We'll return. Okay. So you can see the syntax is a, a lot like uh, using just Makito, but here we're using WireMock, so we're saying a, a WireMock stub for, and we're going to do a post to uh, update. You can see that matches that URL, and we want it to return. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and run that now. And now we can see that is, uh, in fact, working properly. And see if we can get some of the log status here. So Nettie is very chatty. So here we can see that we did get a 200 OK coming back from Nettie. So uh, like I said, Nettie can be very chatty. Sometimes it takes a, a moment to locate stuff uh, inside of the, the logs. But now we, we do have wire up, uh, up and running and our, our webhook is actually hitting the WireMock server. So as you can see, setting up WireMock is not that complicated, pretty simple to do. Uh, just a few steps that you have to go through there. I kind of stepped through everything and intentionally to show you the, the different steps and the different failures. But you did see in there a couple times the test went green, but it actually wasn't hitting the, the uh, service. And that's more of the behavior of uh, REST template, the way REST template works. So it doesn't always bubble up the error for us. And so we could think that our test was failing. So what I'm going to do is show you how we can use WireMock itself to go in and verify that URL was call, called. Um, very, very similar to how Makita works. So we are using the wire mock to set up uh, not only a mock of a web service, but we are also going to verify that mock was in fact called. So I'm going to jump over to IntelliJ and show you exactly how to implement that now. Okay, so what we want to do is set up the test to actually verify that wire mock was in fact called. And this is going to look a lot like what we did for Makita. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say verify. And see that's coming up right away verify as the static import that we want to bring in. So we're going to say one time post requested for, and then we're just going to do update. And you can see there that's highlighting a URL pattern. So there are uh, matches that you could uh, put in there for. And let's see here. Oh, my mistake. URL equal to, should have looked at my notes. 
So we're going to do URL equal to update like so. So that's setting up a, a matcher for the URL. So WireMock does have a, a number of different options that we can use there. So that is going to verify the count. So let's go ahead and run our test now. And we can see that does come back green. Now I could actually say twice or 12. We'll try 12. Oh, I actually whacked the, the comma there. It will still roll, roll a 12 on that. And now we can see that the test does in fact fail because at the end of all this log chatter, we'll see that we expected exactly 12 requests, but only one received. So now if we return it back to one, we'll in fact have a passing test. So we are back in the green. I'm going to minimize that. So just to recap the WireMock configuration, very important to first extend the class with the WireMock extension, and then we are bringing in a managed WireMock server, and we're going to take that WireMock config, give it a dynamic port. Here on line 39, we're configuring that WireMock server to accept a post to update, and then we're going to return an OK with it. And then, of course, on line 43, we had to modify our URL to include the dynamic port that's being set at runtime for our URL. And then finally, on line 51, we're going to go through and actually verify that the WireMock stub was called exactly one time. So you can see that WireMock is very simple to use with your JUnit test uh, for testing web clients. Uh, really handy tool because I, I used to uh, run into problems. I mean, before WireMock was really around and a thing, um, testing your clients, you actually had to bring up some type of web server. And a lot of times they went untested because it really became uh, irritating to <laughs> set all this up to uh, bring up. You're like, how do I test a web server? I, I don't have a web server to test with. So uh, over the last few years, things have become a lot better, a lot more creativity that we can use. And WireMock is a, a really, really great tool. Fairly lightweight. You can see that it, it does uh, take a little bit to bring up Netty, uh, but it does work really well. So uh, I'm not going to be able to cover every nook and feature of WireMock. I mainly want to make you guys aware of uh, having WireMock in your tool belt of things that you can test with, because when you're doing developing Spring, applications, uh, you're often consuming or uh, utilizing uh, web services. So uh, you know, when you're writing clients, WireMock is a great tool, very robust API. Uh, so there's a lot that you can do with it. Uh, hope you guys use it in the future.